This tutorial is on content information systems. So, we start with the outline of the talk. We start with entropy, which is a measure of information. Then we come to quantum analog of entropy, which is the von Neumann entropy. Here we have conditional entropy. Conditional entropy measures the information contained in one random variable given that the outcome of another random variable is known. So, basically it measures the information gained from learning the outcome of x given that y is known. If we know the color of the sock on the left foot, there is nothing to be known from looking at the right foot because we know that the color of sock is the same. So, basically the conditional entropy between them is 0. The conditional entropy measures the information gained from learning the outcome of x given that y is known. As an example, this is the sock example I gave. The color of socks is the same, so the conditional entropy between the colors of socks is 0. On the other hand, if x and y are completely independent, then hxy is simply hx. So, if the information gained from x is not deduced by knowledge about y. We can describe the joint distribution of x and y by describing x and then describing y given that x is already known. This leads to a relationship between the conditional and joint entropies. hxy is hx plus hy given that x is known. The fourth is mutual information. Mutual information measures the correlation between two random variables in terms of how much knowledge of one random variable reduces the information gained from learning the other random variable. We define it as follows. The mutual information between two random variables x and y is the difference between the information gained from learning x and the information gained from learning x when y is already known. So, i x y comes out as h x minus h x given that y is known. If x and y are independent, then the mutual information between x and y is 0. If they are completely correlated, such as the colors of pair of socks, then the mutual information between them is the same as the information in x. Next, we come to quantum information. For quantum information, we have von Neumann entropy. So, there is a quantum analog of entropy known as von Neumann entropy. Just as Shannon entropy measures the amount of order in a classical system, von Neumann entropy gauges order in a given quantum system. The von Neumann entropy for a quantum source is represented by a density operator D is HV is minus sigma lambda i log to the base 2 lambda i, where lambdas are the eigenvalues of the density operator D. Next, we have the need for distinct states. When we do measurement, assume that Alice has chosen her quantum symbols or alphabet as a set of normalized states in C, pet w1, pet w2, pet wn. Alice does not have to choose an orthogonal set of states, they simply need to be distinct. If she wishes to notify Bob, she can choose four normalized states in some state space. Even the single qubit space has got great room as there are infinitely many distinct qubits. So, she could select the following set as an example. A is cut 0, B is cut 1, C is cut 0 plus cut 1 by root 2, cut B is cut 0 minus cut 1 by root 2. So, next we come to the density operator. The density operator is simply defined as the P1 probability into the outer product of W1, P2 into outer product of w 2 and so, so, this is the density matrix. Now, we compute the product 0 d 0 and 1 d 1, they come out as 5 by 6 and 1 by 6 respectively. If we calculate channel entropy with respect to this basis, we get it as 0.65. We continue from example 1 with the density matrix 5 by 6, 1 by 6, 1 by 6 and 1 by 6. Now, we find the one human entropy and verify that it is equal to Shannon's entropy when calculated with respect to orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of D. The matrix D has eigenvalues lambda 1.1273 and lambda 2 as 0.8727. These correspond to the normalized eigenvectors k t1 and k t2. So, the one Neumann entropy of D is given by HBD which is minus lambda sigma minus lambda log lambda. So, you get it as 0.55. <coughs> We can verify that von Neumann's entropy is identical to Shannon's entropy when calculated with respect to the orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of D. So, in this case we get it as 0.1273 and 0.8727. You can observe that the sum of eigenvalues is indeed 1 and both eigenvalues are positive as the its true probabilities. Also, it can be noticed that entropy is lower than the one calculated using the other two bases. In fact, it can indeed be proven that it is as low as it can possibly be. So, basically it depends on what pair of glasses we are wearing. When we want to look at states, we, the need for distinct states is there. Next, we come to the no cloning theorem. 
A striking difference between content and classical information storage is that we cannot clone unknown content state. We cannot view the copy of a state. Because if you have to copy it, you have to first measure it. And once you measure it, you end up destroying it. That is, given a quantum state ket chai is alpha ket 0 plus beta ket 1, it is impossible to produce two copies ket chai ket chai without knowing the values of alpha and beta. This is due to the linearity of quantum mechanics. Suppose that u is a unitary operator which clones any qubit ket chai, then u can clone the state ket 0 and ket 1. So u ket 0 comes out as ket 0 0 and u ket 1 comes out as ket 1 1. Now you can see that if we apply u to a general qubit, then what we get is u ket chai is alpha ket 0 0 plus beta ket 1 1. However, if u was able to clone ket chai, then we should have got ket chai into ket chai, which comes out as this. And it can be clearly say, seen that these two expressions are not the same. So basically, you cannot clone quantum information. Next, we come to quantum measurements. The act of carrying out an observation on a given physical system is called measurement. Just as a single observable represents a specific question posed to the system, measuring is the process consisting of asking a specific question and receiving a definite answer. In classical physics, we implicitly, as, implicitly assume that first, the act of measuring would leave the system in whatever state it already was, at least in principle. And second, the result of a measurement on a well-defined state is predictable. That is, if we know the state with absolute certainty, we can anticipate the value of the observable on that state. But both these assumptions have been proved wrong as research in the subatomic scale has repeatedly shown. Systems do get perturbed and modified as a result of measuring them. Furthermore, only the probabilities of observing specific values can be calculated. Measurement is inherently a non-deterministic process. Quantum measurements are controlled by the third postulate of quantum mechanics which states that a quantum state can be measured by use of a set of orthogonal projections. If ket chai 1, ket chai 2, ket chai k are orthogonal states, then a quantum state ket chai can be measured by use of ket phi 1, ket phi k and collapses into the state ket phi i with probability given by the inner sum product squared, modulus squared. We look at the effect of multiple observables. For our experiment, we use a thin semi-transparent semi polarization sheet, which does two things. One, we do two things. One, we orient them in a specific direction. We measure the polarization of light in the orthogonal basis corresponding to that direction, say the vertical horizontal basis. So, in the first case, we shine light here and light partially passes through one polarization sheet, as can be seen. In the second case, what we do is, we have two sheets and we orient them so that we have rotated the second sheet by 90 degrees. So what happens is, no light passes through both the sheets. Horizontally polarized light passes through one, vertically polarized light can only pass through the other. So the net result is that no light can pass through the two polarization sheets at orthogonal angles. We can try variants of this experiment. If you put a third sheet here, it has no effect on the output because still nothing passes. If you please place a third sheet here, still nothing changes, you get no light at the output. But let us try something more. If we add a third sheet to the left or right of the other two sheets, it does not have any effect whatsoever. No light was permitted before and none will be allowed to the additional sheet. However, if we place the third sheet in between the other two at an angle of 45 degrees as shown, it does have a remarkable effect as light will now pass through all the three sheets. However, only one eighth of the original light passes through all the three sheets. But still, introducing this in the middle changes how things work. So, the summary is that the answers we get will depend on which question, depends on which order we pose our question. That is, which observable we measure first. Second, when we measure several observables, the order of measurement matters. Next, we come to physical realization of quantum computer, something about the Vincenzo criteria. In principle, a large scale quantum computer can be built using these primitives which must be realized by a controllable quantum system provided the physical system meets the following requirements spelled out by D. Vincenzo at IBM research labs. They are called as the D. Vincenzo criteria now. <coughs> First, we should have a scalable physics system with well characterized qubits. We should have the ability to initialize the state of the qubits to a simple fiducial state. We should have long decurrence times much longer than the gate operation time. A universal set of gates should be experimentally feasible. We should have a qubit specific measurement capability. We should have the ability to interconvert stationary and flying qubits. 
and we should have the ability to faithfully transmit flying qubits between specified locations. So the technologies presently being used to make quantum computers have been listed out as trapped ion, NMR, neutral atoms, cavity QED, optical, solid state superconducting. And these are as far as the deviant sensor criteria go. The first five relate to quantum computation, the sixth and seventh ones relate to quantum computing network ability. So A means a potentially viable approach has achieved sufficient proof of principle. B means a potentially viable approach has been proposed, but there has not been sufficient proof of principle. C means no viable approach is proved. So basically all the technologies have been graded and you can see that no single technology has got straight A's. If one technology has got some thing like ability to initialize state of the qubits, it does not have some other property. So basically there is still no technology which has got all straight A's. So we have several challenges before QIP. Identification of the best suitable physical system which allows for scalability, coherence and fast implementation of QIP. Engineering and control of quantum mechanical systems far beyond anything achieved so far. In particular concerning reliability, fault tolerance and using error correction. Development of a computer architecture taking into account quantum mechanical features. Development of interfacing and networking techniques for quantum computers. Investigation and development of quantum algorithms and protocols and most importantly transfer of academic knowledge about the control and measurement of quantum systems to industry and thus acquisition of industrial support and interest for developing and providing quantum systems. At Dalba Educational Institute we have the Quantum and Nano Computing Virtual Center, a project under the National Mission on Education through Information and Communication Technology under the Ministry of Human Resource Development Government of India. DIA is the lead partner, other partners are IIT Delhi, Dr. Talwa is there, he is a collaborator from there, IIT Kanpur, Dr. Goswami will be joining us and IIT Madras where Dr. Mangal Sundar is our collaborator. The project objectives are to bring together through ICT complementary research strengths of the partnering group spread all over the country, to utilize the latest distance learning techniques and provide opportunities for young scientists and researchers at any place and time for inclusive growth. And dissemination of knowledge through ICT in quantum nanocomputing, through organization of winter school, seminars, courses, webcasts and contacts. So basically this is the roadmap we have charted out for quantum computation. We started out in 2007 by generating awareness in the field through an Indo-US workshop for 2007. And our collaborators at IIT Kanpur organized Back Action 2006 and Nanotech 2007 at FITT IIT Delhi. Then we had Conclave 2007 of the various universities. First Indian books on quantum and nanocomputing were co-authored. Kansas 2008, we generated education in the field. In the pilot stage of the project, we organized Kansas 2009 with uh, several of our partner institutes. This time we are aiming at convergence, unification of interdisciplinary focus areas of partners for wider catchment. And our ultimate aim is realization, qubit demonstration and realization of a quantum computer. Our national partners are IIT Kanpur, IIT Delhi, IIT Madras, ISC Bangalore, IIT Bombay, IIT Kharagpur, TIFR Mumbai, IMSC Chennai, Institute of Physics Bhumneshwar, ISI Kolkata, IIT Roshi and DARC Mumbai. Our international partners are Institute for Quantum Computing, University of Waterloo, Canada. Of course, we have three invited speakers from Waterloo this time. Institute for Quantum Sciences, Michigan State University, USA. We have Dr. Philip Dutchbury from MSC here. MIT, University of Maryland College Park, from where Professor Wendell Hill and Dr. Bailock who have joined us today. IBM Watson Research Center, Dr. Charles Bennett was there two years back. And Alcatel Lucent Bell Labs USA, where Dr. Love Grover is collaborating with us. We have developed three year goals, five year goals, ten year goals for quantum computation. Like in the three year goals, we plan to develop prototypes, we develop unified modeling theory for information processing, web based interfaces. Conceptual framework for remote communication using quantum teleportation. Five year goals we plan to demonstrate devices realizing quantum algorithms, fault tolerant computing, tools for unified representation in quantum information and communication, quantum field theory and string theory, and quantum simulations that cannot be simulated classically. Ten year goals achieve large dimension quantum memory, quantum algorithms with up to 50 qubits. Quantum algorithms with fault tolerant correction, convergence unification attempts for theory of everything or rather theory of many things. 
we have lot of classroom interaction through ICT between DI, IIT Kanpur University of Waterloo and Michigan State University. Between our partners, Professor Goswami, IIT Kanpur gives lectures here. We have had webcast from Michigan State, Waterloo. At SQUAN 2007, we had people from all over the world. Professor P.N. Jain, Director, Deputy Director, IIT Delhi was there. We had a webcast from UP Berkeley, Professor Umesh Mazirani. Dr. Lak Guror was here. And at every school, we also organized a panel discussion to bring together the classical and quantum information community. And we look forward to the panel discussion this time too. In Kotler 2007, we had people from IIT Kanpur, Waterloo, MIT. Kansas 2008, we had Dr. Charles Bennett with us from IBM Research. He, in fact, he was the one who discovered or invented teleportation. We had and Professor Jagdish Kumar from IIT Delhi, IIC Bangalore. Kansas 2009 was attended by over 100 students and researchers from all over the world. And all lectures of all our schools have been digitized and put up online. So that people can watch them sitting at their homes anytime. So the basic idea is that whatever we do here, the whole country, the whole community should benefit from it. And uh, last, uh, Kansas 2009, the inaugural talk was delivered by Professor Douglas Osherov. He was the PhD student of Professor Richardson here and they shared the Nobel Prize with Professor Lee. There, we plan to have another photo like that in the afternoon. The panel discussion at Kansas 2009 concluded that critical mass is being approached in India with experts from physics, chemistry, electrical and electronics engineering, computer science and information technology and the quantum nano center is acting as a glue or catalyst in the field. We have co-authored books at DI and IIT Kanpur on the subject on quantum computing and nano computing and our next book will be released in April 2007 by McGraw-Hill that is on quantum information systems. I am a co-author. Professor Vasudevan Lakshmi Narayanan, he was with us at Kansas 2008, he is an author. And Ms. Dalkari Sirvastar, who is pursuing her PhD at DI and IIT Delhi under their MOU, is the third author. Of course, she will get to hear her speak on December 4th. She is giving a talk. The need of the R is to have an Indian roadmap. Lug Grover said that having missed the boat in the silicon revolution in the 70s and 80s, India should make every attempt not to let it happen again, even if it means spending some resources on technologies like quantum computing, which are speculative but hold tremendous potential. USA has its Quantum Information Science and Technology Roadmap prepared in April 2004 by the Quantum Information Science and Technology Research Panel. Europe has its own Quantum Information Processing and Communication Strategic Report, a pan-European effort to position Europe as a world leader in quantum information processing and communication. Canada has Quantum Works Canada, IQC is also collaborator in that. So this is as far as funding goes, India is placed somewhere in the middle. And of course, if India is to develop this technology, we should go up. Some glimpses of the equipment at the Quantum Nanosystem Center there at the DI Research and Technology Park. This facility was established in March 2010. Now we have got squid devices here, superconducting quantum interference devices installed in pulse tube coolers. It is the first setup of its kind in India and we plan to make it eventually available for online use through web interface of the DI virtual labs project. Some glimpses of the equipment here. Some experiments in fact. We are also planning to acquire a quantum communication setup, quantum entanglement based key distribution system with dedicated optical fiber link of 24 kilometers for experiments in quantum communication. The speaker is extremely grateful to Professor Satsangi, Chairman Advisory Committee on Education, Jalbagh for introduction to the field. And that's it. Thank you.